Hey, what's going on? It's Jeff Newport from ChasingStrength.com. And in this video, I want to cover the five level pyramid for optimal kettlebell workout gains. And that's, you know, the usual gains with a Z. Like, how are your gains, bruh? <laughs> all right. So all jesting aside, you know, many people wonder if they're doing the right kettlebell workouts for them uh, at the right times, or they'll finish one program, one kettlebell routine, and they'll wonder what's next. Well, in a recent email series, I wrote different workouts, different training plans have different training effects and different outcomes on your body. And in fact, some are better than others. All right. So not everything you find on the internet for free is worth its weight in gold, right? Pretty much it's, you get what you pay for. So uh, what are those things, right? There are three things that make kettlebell workouts good for you at certain times and bad for you at other times and bad for you uh, all the time, right? Or good for you all the time. And those three things are what you have going on in your life currently or your stress levels, your training history, and your current uh, your current abilities or your current training levels. So whether you're injured or healthy, for example. And because of that, one of my best customers, Bruno, asked me in a recent email, I'm going to read this here. He said, I love your emails, your Monday motivation, and the other things you send out about things you think on Sunday and share with them, uh, share with us. And one of them, you talked about the pyramid of kettlebells, level one to five. I would love to learn more about it. Maybe a book, maybe more emails, more on every level, more examples of programs on every level, how to progress from one level to another. So that's why I thought I'd make this video. And actually, we're going to make a series of videos and cover these five levels, uh, what these five levels comprise of, um, and uh, what kind of workouts you're going to be doing when you use these five levels. And more importantly, why are these five levels important? So uh, bear with me here. I'm going to pop something up on the screen. There you go. So here is... Here is that five level pyramid. So why did I come up with this five levels of kettlebell training? Well, pretty simple, really. I designed it to provide a clear path of progression based upon your skill levels using kettlebells. I designed it to systematize a way to learn and implement the different kettlebell exercises for folks who aren't going to any certifications, right? Like the Strong First Kettlebell Instructor Certification or the RKC Certification, or who aren't going to meet up with any kettlebell instructors, certified kettlebell instructors locally. And uh, third, to give you an idea of the type of training that you can do at all the different skill levels. All right. So let's cover the details on the five levels. So you know how you can use them to best meet your needs. All right. So down here at the bottom, we have level one and that's single kettlebell exercises, primarily the swings, right? All the swings. So two hand, one hand and hand to hand, Turkish getups and goblet squats. Now this level builds the foundation for all your kettlebell training and your level two and level four exercises. And these may look simple, but these exercises, the swings, the Turkish get up and the goblet squat yield some pretty powerful results all by them loan, all by the, all by their lonesome. I need to get some water here. All right. And so for some, this is enough or all they need for others. This is all they can currently do based upon their current injury history or their physical limitations. This is where I start all my new private clients who've never touched a kettlebell before. And it's where I meet all my current kettlebell clients with a review session, right? So current, we always go back and review these basics. And uh, any new client who has done kettlebell training who starts with me, they get a review on these basics. Again, that's because this is the foundation for the other four levels. Um, as far as I know, these, are, these used to be the foundational lifts for the kettlebell certifications. And as far as I know, they still are, but I'm not actively involved in the strong first leadership or the RKC leadership anymore. So I couldn't tell you for sure if you're wondering. So how much time should you spend here on this level? A minimum of 30 days. And for some people, it's going to be a year, maybe even more. All right. So let's take a look at level two. The, the level two single kettlebell exercises are the clean, the military press, the snatch, the push press, and the jerk. Now, these exercises produce more demand on the body and therefore produce a larger, stronger adaptation in your muscles, your strength, and your conditioning. All right. Typically speaking, we can break down level two even further to uh, level 2A, which is, again, these are the, the three uh, exercises, three more exercises that are taught in the certification courses, right? The clean, the military press, and the snatch. They require less coordination than what I call the 2B exercises. So they're either 2B or not 2B, right? A little Hamlet joke in there for you. So level 2B exercises are the push press and the jerk. 
And now some may argue that the push press could be lumped into the 2A category because it's just way easier than the jerk. Uh, I put it in the 2B category because it's a prep exercise and a valuable tool for learning and training the jerk. And that's because the jerk takes more thoracic spine mobility, more shoulder flexibility than the push press or the military press. Uh, furthermore, you know, some people, they just stop at the push press because the effort in recapturing the thoracic spine mobility, your T-spine mobility, so that's your upper back and the shoulder mobility slash flexibility is, it's just, just not worth it to them. So the juice just isn't worth the squeeze to go the extra five or 10% uh, to be able to learn the jerk. All right, so let's look at the level three. So these are the power, power endurance, and strength endurance programming or training with level one and level two exercises. And that's pretty important because that's where a lot of advanced, for lack of a better term, uh, gains. Again, remember, that's always gains with a Z, bro, All right, are made. And this challenges your ability to maintain your form in the face of fatigue. So it's training and there's a form of testing there too. So uh, again, this level challenges your prowess with level one and level two exercises through more sophisticated programming. An example, it could be, uh, you know, single kettlebell complexes. Uh, usually, but not always, this type of programming uses less rest and requires that your technique is absolutely dialed in. So again, like we just discussed, you can maintain your technique without your form breaking down when you're tired. Let's move to level four. The double kettlebell exercises, these are arguably my favorite exercises all of all my kettlebell exercises, right? It is, uh, again, the level four double kettlebell exercises, the swing, the clean, the squat, military press, snatch, push press, jerk, and any and all double kettlebell assistance exercises. For example, renegade row. So what makes the level four exercises that much more demanding? That's focus, okay? The level four exercises demand focus, and they produce exponential change in your body's physical capacity. Um, the level four exercises build upon the skills you learn in levels one and two. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your vantage point, the level four exercises expose whether you truly learn those level one and level two skills or not. And that's, that's because double kettlebell work has less wiggle room, less degrees of freedom to accommodate any of your movement issues, old injuries, stiffness, lack of mobility, that sort of thing, all right, when compared to the level one and level two exercises. Now, unfortunately for us, this also means if you don't get your technique dialed in and fix those issues that you can sidestep with the level one and level two exercises, you're going to increase your, your chance of getting hurt with these level four exercises. Uh, now, interesting, from a personality perspective, what I've noticed over the years is that the double kettlebell exercises are typically... They attract high achievers who only insist on challenging themselves and bringing the best out of themselves. And uh, these are people who are interested in setting goals like becoming physically stronger, and then they attach a number to that, or improving conditioning, and they attach a number to that. So uh, a great example would be being able to easily pass the Strong First or RKC five-minute kettlebell snatch test, right? So that's 100 snatches in five minutes. And so the Level four exercises are a great way to accomplish that sort of goal. And that's com compared to other types of people who necessarily aren't high achievers. And that's nothing wrong with that, but they have kind of vague goals like, I just want to get in shape or I just want to stay in shape, that type of thing. All right. So that being said, let's move on to our last and final level, level five. These are the power, power endurance and strength endurance programming and training with the level four exercises. Again, the ability to maintain maintain form, your technique, in the face of fatigue, all right? So this is very similar to the level three programming, except it's done with double kettlebell exercises. So what we found, what I've discovered over the last 20 plus years training people with kettlebells, including myself, right, is that the level five programming develops and refines what we call an iron will, and it produces high performance outputs. And really, this is... This is in my opinion, the type of kettlebell training that makes everyday living and sporting activity effortless. So this is the type of training that allows you to go out on long hikes and not feel it at the end of the day or participate in your favorite grappling arts and throw people around, right? And not get tired. This is the type of training we're talking about. All right, level five programming breeds 
confidence. I mean, I like to define it right as the type of confidence that makes you feel like you can fight a grizzly bear with your bare hands. All right. Not that I recommend you should, right. But just, you might feel that way. Now here's something interesting about the level five programming. This is the, this is the type of programming that starts to make you look like you're carved from granite, almost like one of those ancient statues of Greek gods. So, you know, if that's one of your goals, I want to look like Heracles, you know, this is the type of programming that's for you. All right. Again, assuming you've made it through levels one through four. All right. Now, one thing I do want to point out is a lot of folks are prohibited from making that jump from level two to level four because they literally just can't get out of their own way. Like their lower backs hurt all the time. Their shoulders hurt all the time. All, all the time excuse me. Um, they can't put their arms over their heads, right? Straight over their heads. So what I mean is they can't uh, turn sideways. They get stuck here, right? Like this, as opposed to here. And they keep grinding away on that and keep trying to push through pain, right? And lack of range of motion. And they they just don't understand why they keep getting banged up, dinged up, and they keep hurting. So there are three reasons for that, right? That's either because they live a sedentary life, they've got injuries from their past, or a combination of those two. Uh, so that's why I want to make a resource available. You'll find it in the link here underneath this video. If that's you and you feel like you just keep getting dinged up, and want to progress up these levels, but you know that you can't because your body's holding you back. I'll put a link underneath this level of a restoration program that I developed and I use myself on a daily basis that I think will really help you out. So that's what we've got in this video. That is the broad overview of the five levels of kettlebell training. All right. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I made as I enjoyed making it for you. And I will see you in the next one. All right. Talk soon, my friend.